N-ethylnorhexadrone, or Hexen, is a stimulant in the cathinone class. It's only been on the market since 2015, and little is known about the substance. Hexen has become a somewhat popular drug, with comparisons to cocaine, alpha-PHP, and alpha-PVP fueling its popularity. People usually take it as a recreational, rather than a productive stimulant. The positive effects can include mood lift, euphoria, stimulation, greater talkativeness, increased sociability, increased confidence, physical euphoria, and increased motivation. The negatives can include anxiety, paranoia, jitteriness, increases in heart rate and blood pressure, sweating, jaw clenching, dry mouth, muscle tension, and vasoconstriction. A lot of comparisons to cocaine have been made, and those comparisons appeared almost immediately after the drug became available. However, it does feel like a distinct drug, and some people find it's better compared to cathinones like alpha-PHP and PVP. Of course, the core effects can be viewed as similar. It has a short duration, the potential to cause a rush of euphoria, and it can make people sociable. Sociability is enhanced through a greater desire to talk, reduced anxiety, and increased confidence. Though, if you take higher doses or too many redoses, it can leave you scatterbrained, which isn't great for clear conversations. Like other recreational stimulants, it produces pleasurable feelings around the body, like sensations of warmth and tingling. Low or common doses can be somewhat productive, with it providing stimulation and a relatively clear mental state, though typically people are pursuing the drug's euphoria, which is best obtained with higher doses. Especially when taken intranasally or inhaled, there can be a rush of stimulation, euphoria, and even a momentary sense of calm and peace. This is followed followed by a substantially enhanced mood and greater engagement with whatever you're doing. For those who receive these effects, it can be a wonderful feeling. Yet because the euphoria lasts 30 to 60 minutes, redosing is very common. It's almost universally reported not to maintain its euphoria for more than a couple extra doses. Once you've taken it a few times, the best effects fail to return, and you're left with a rising level of uncomfortable stimulation, anxiety, and paranoia. So despite its recreational potential, many users come away disliking the drug because it can so easily switch from desirable to unpleasant. And some people, for whatever reason, don't receive much euphoria to begin with. Although a strong desire to redose is present with this drug, it's important to exert self-control. If you plan on taking more than one dose, you need to plan out your doses ahead of time, such as taking one dose every hour for two or three times. If you let yourself get carried away, you can easily easily redose far too many times, raising the chance of insomnia, paranoia, and a very harsh come down. And since the nice, euphoric rush stops coming back, you're eventually just redosing to avoid a come down. You do not want to end up in a situation where you're compulsively redosing all day long, much less for multiple days. And if you're someone who doesn't have much self-control under the influence, it's best not to use the drug. Some of the greatest problems, namely severe come downs or stimulant psychosis, appear with extended binges or really heavy use during a single day. You should not use this drug to avoid sleep. Typically, stimulant psychosis appears after you've skipped at least one night of sleep, but sufficiently high doses during a single day can produce a psychotic, paranoid state. This is a legitimate concern with overuse. If you're naturally prone to visual distortions, paranoia, and other odd symptoms, when you're naturally sleep-deprived, you need to be even more cautious. The come down ranges from fatigue to severe depression, depending on your individual response and how much you've used. The more you try to prolong and increase the recreational effects, the worse it's going to be. Because come down symptoms can start to appear within one to two hours after dosing, redosing is incentivized. Again, you need to exert self control. With common usage patterns, it tends to produce a come down that's less severe than alpha PVP. But it it varies a lot between users. The core symptoms include low motivation, low mood, irritability, and insomnia. Intranasally, the drug lasts for two to four hours and has an onset of five to 15 minutes. It lasts for one to three hours when inhaled with an onset of two to 10 minutes. The residual stimulation that persists beyond the euphoria can either be comfortable or unpleasant. When it's unpleasant, you can end up experiencing a longer period of negative than positive effects. Usually, this stimulation lasts at least a few hours. 
Hexen is the N-ethyl derivative of hexadrone. It has structural similarities to alpha PHP, with the nitrogen in the pyrrolidine ring of alpha PHP instead being bonded to an ethyl moiety and a hydrogen in hexen. The drug is also similar in structure and homologous to N-ethyl pentadrone, another research chemical stimulant. Because it hasn't been studied, we don't know how the drug is functioning. Given its effects and structure, the common belief is that it's a reuptake inhibitor for dopamine and norepinephrine. It increases the functional concentrations of those neurotransmitters by preventing them from re-entering the presynaptic cell. When taken intranasally, a light dose is 10 to 25 milligrams, a common dose is 25 to 40 milligrams, and a strong dose is 40 to 50 milligrams. When inhaled, a light dose is 2 to 5 milligrams, a common dose is 5 to 10 milligrams, and a strong dose is 10 to 20 milligrams. The drug was originally patented in 1964 by a German pharmaceutical company that was investigating various amino ketone derivatives. Essentially nothing happened with the drug until 2015, when it showed up on the research chemical market. Between 2015 and 2016, seizures by law enforcement were reported around Europe. As of 2017, it continues to be sold, typically by online vendors. It's not specifically controlled in the U.S., though it could be controlled under the Analog Act. It's controlled as an analog in Australia, is Schedule 1 in Canada, and is a Class B drug in the U.K. Very little is known about the drug's safety, so it's best to use it infrequently, at common doses, and without combinations. It does increase cardiovascular stress, and palpitations are fairly common with redosing or high doses. Seizure susceptibility is also likely increased. People with epilepsy or cardiovascular disorders are best off avoiding the drug. Some of the risky combinations include other stimulants, tramadol, MAOIs, and psychedelics. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Comments. The Drug Classroom is only funded by donations. This content is possible due to listener support. If you want to support, you can do so through Patreon, PayPal, or Bitcoin.